Big. All right, here we are. All right. Okay. It's about 1 o'clock, 1.30. We're up here in the Boundary Waters, heading out across Snowbank, pulling our beautiful little pulks there. Me and Alex, just us. Just us. Weather's not supposed to be too bad for Minnesota. Pretty. Yeah. Frosty. Yeah. Yeah, there's a uh, woo. It's beautiful out here. It's cloudy. It's moody. Uh, a little late in the day. We're not gonna have a lot of light, but heading on over, probably Parent Lake. We got a portage right down that way. Woo, buddy. Time to grab breakfast. Always tie the food off on the tree. In my ur sack. It's a fat food bag. Hello me. Hello morning. Fresh brewed Medallia d'Oro. It is about 24 degrees, so pretty mild. Looking down toward Alex. He might still be sleeping in. It is after 8 o'clock in the morning because it doesn't even really get light out here until about 7.15, 7.30. You know, I'm still trying to decide whether brewing a cup of coffee in the morning. And I used this little deal today that uh, Jason sent me as a Christmas gift. Thank you, ma'am. And I do have a little pack of my instant Medallia Dodo down there, which I can just dump and stir. I will say the fresh brewed is tastier. I do have to wait a little longer to get it and deal with a little fuss afterwards. I got up yesterday at uh, 2.58 in the morning, and I drove to Park Rapids, Minnesota to pick up Alex, which is about not nearly four hours, three hours, 45 minutes, four hours with a couple of stops to woo-woo. Mm-hmm. Hi there. Yeah, all right, I'll back off from you. Picked him up, and then uh, it's about four hours from Park Rapids to Ely. And then, you know, spent our time getting our pulks hooked up and everything. And, you know, by the time we got out here to camp, and, man, it was glorious walking across the lakes. But by the time we got to camp, we had not a lot of daylight left, and, I kind of wanted to get my superior gear hammock hung up in the light of day and get my tarp put up in the light of day. And I made uh, what I call upside down meatloaf for me and Meg the other night. So you get your brown sugar on the bottom of your pan, then you catch up, then you put your meatloaf in there and cook it. So that juice in the meat goes down into the brown sugar and ketchup. 
caramelizes. Then you take it out of the oven and have to cook it at about 350. <clears throat> kind of drain a little bit of the, the fat off. And then let it sit, you know, let it rest 15 minutes. Then flip it out of the pan. And that uh, brown sugar and ketchup on top is not all dried out and stuff. So I made us up some meals last night with Meg's mashed potatoes and some broccoli. And I actually have another one for myself. Maybe two. I might be eating that the whole time. And some country ham biscuits. Thank you, James. Woo, buddy. Real southern salty country ham. So we brought a lot of food, so we think we might just have to sit around here and just uh, eat some food today. And now, instant medaglia d'oro. Pour, stir, and drink. When it's cold in the morning, you just want to get awake and be awake. That may win. Yeah, where is my bloody spoon? I know all you guys are always asking about the little table I have. It's like a little golden table that sticks on a pole. And I filmed his updated version. About two months ago I ordered a new one. And Tommy was kind enough to kind of send in, a, put in a couple little extras for me. You know, sometimes out in the snow, I got my fancy feast down in there, and if I'm not watching properly, even though I got it sitting on that little piece of foil, it'll kind of melt into the snow and tip, and once or twice, I've lost my hot water, and that's a bummer, because that uh, delays coffee time. Cheers. I notice now he has a, an option for this little tiny tripod, and I was kind of thinking that would sit perfectly in the snow. I can level it out. I got the, uh, the best buddy table right here. It's a little bit longer. Kind of fun. I think it uh, might be a little improvement on uh, my uh, Medaglia d'Oro Espresso in the morning.
back with you now. I had me a couple of sips, but I'm going to take my little pouch that I keep my camera in that uh, you're inside right now. Talk to you in there. And what I do is I have a little inside pouch that I slip a hand warmer into. Pocket hand warmer. One of those deals. That one's done. Put me a new one in there. <clears throat> that way I can kind of be a little more reckless. We'll keep my camera, you know, not inside two or three layers of coats all the time, which I usually do. I still do with that thing, but I can have it in my pocket and uh, some oxygen in that thing. And then after talking to you here, I can just reach over after I got that in there and just drop that on over the camera. And it will keep it uh, warm enough that next time I turn it on, it's happy to film. So yeah, like it got a little colder than we thought it was going to be last night. And that's always fun. And that's why I took my, uh, my outer under quilt that I can snap onto the superior hammock and put that on. Because this superior hammock is a... Uh, 15 degree and this outer under quilt is a 30 together probably good to minus 20 or something but uh, you know saw the temps drop and getting ready to go to bed and it was like already like 7 degrees and I was, said well I don't want to push it or do too much testing let's just double up We had a lot of firewood yesterday. Spent a bunch of the day uh, sawing and splitting wood. And it was satisfying because we had an all-day fire. Still got a little bit of firewood left down there. Pretty settled in here. And we got a lot of wood that we can go saw and cut that's down really close to us. And, you know, pulling a pulk. It's still a little bit of work, especially through the portage. And, you know, I got that thing loaded up. I'll admit I'm a little heavier this time because I had the splitting axe. I got a hatchet. I carried out the firebox stove. It's kind of new, and I wanted to try it out out here. And I hadn't really gotten it out yet because we've had such a big fire. It's, the day goes fast. I mean, it wasn't light till 7.30, and it'll be dark by 4.30. And, you know, every time we start doing stuff and, you know, you start to go... All right, I'm going to go over there and cut a log and split some stuff. Warms you right up and just getting your food ready. And you can piddle a day real quick. I think it's just going to make backpacking a little more fun. No matter how old you are or young you are. you got to just kind of change your groove once in a while to make it exciting and go, ah, yeah, you can always go a different style. So it's really nice. You know, that's, that Grunfor Brook split axe is maybe, yeah, it's a little over two pounds, definitely worth carrying. And, uh, you know, being able to split that wood up like that was really good. You know, I, I never thought I'd say this, but I'm not even eating my peanut butter pap tarts this morning. I know. How many styles am I going to change? Because I cooked myself some pancakes at home. Made some really good pancakes and I pre-cooked some bacon. Loaded with butter. Brought a stick of butter. Brought some maple syrup. When I get up, got my little frying pan. I'm take it down there when we get a fire started. Me and Alex are going to have pancakes. And that's what is on my mind. And a peanut butter pop tart. I don't want anything slowing down my appetite for them pancakes. Because I made a bunch of them. And they're heavy. And the Medaglia d'Oro Instant Espresso is a waking me up now. I feel the caffeine kicking in. I feel it filling my body. I don't know, this trip I really just wanted to come out and, and burn wood. All day. Cut it. Split it. Chip it. Love it.
Coffee time, coffee time, coffee time in the woods, doing them morning chores, yeah! Mmm, that there's a pretty boy. You are Smokey. Hey, Smokey. Uh, that little stove's kicking out some heat, too, man. Sit there stoking that thing, and you just have to keep feeding it, that firebox stove, and... Whew! Alrighty, I'm loading this thing up like a Swedish burning log. You can put some pretty big wood here, 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 here. Stuff some stuff in the middle. Get these pancakes going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A little lake walking. Hello, little short arms. <laughs> Long leg, short arms. Yeah, tonight's a little delight. It's the timeout wafer. Man, it is a good one. It's a Cadbury, one of my favorite. It's like an uppity Kit Kat. Maybe it's more sophisticated and better schooled and still a good friend and still someone that's will stand by your side. <laughs> you ever had a timeout, Alex? I don't think I You fix it to get a bite of one. I'd say last night was probably the windiest night out here, but the good old Superfly, put the good old war bonnet Superfly with the internal pole mod and some doors. Get me good. One door pitch behind me. I never felt a puff, but I felt it moving through camp. Well, I got my sprawl right on there. Merci beaucoup, Matthew. I love this. This is good. So I appreciate that. And you can uh, pull the edges in and draw it up into a little bundle. But I need a sprawl. Sprawl, sprawl, sprawl. And that says it all. Packing up, getting ready to head out. Don't want to go. Went too fast. Oh, got myself a pretty boil. Mm, yes, sir.
Windy out here today. Yeah, we're on the final pitch home now. It was good, and we realized walking out here we didn't wear our snowshoes. We should have, because it would have kept our mucklucks out of the slush. But there's some areas with no slush, but <clears throat> there's some right now. Well, let's see, what is it? January 14th, where there's some pretty good slush. Are you interested in slush? Let's see that pork pork in you, Alex. Sometimes you gotta walk the pork down like a dog. Sure. 